What's up everyone, Andrew Bainey here, and on today's video we have an awesome guitar. This is the Aristides H09R. You might have already seen this guitar in the unboxing video, but on today's video we're going to be doing a full demo, going through a full demo mix, as well as some solo tone clips, the specs, and of course my thoughts and opinions on this guitar. I do want to mention that this video is not sponsored by Aristides. This guitar is not mine to keep. It was sent to me pretty much to make videos like this with, as well as have joint custody of the guitar with my good friend Johnny Chargulo, who we will be writing a couple of original songs to showcase this guitar even more. So if you like how it sounds in this video and you want to see this guitar more, please be sure to stay tuned to my channel because it will be featured on at least a couple more videos. So with all that being said, the first thing we're going to do is show you what this guitar sounds like in a full demo mix. Then we're going to come back, talk about the specs, show off the individual tone clips, and of course my thoughts and opinions. So with all that being said, this is how the Aristides H09R sounds in a full demo mix. Okay, now that you've heard how the guitar sounds in a full demo mix, we're going to talk about the specs and features of this instrument. First and foremost, if you've never heard of Aristides before, basically there are zero wood components on this guitar, and because of that, it's actually one solid piece, as you can see on the back there. It's not bolt-on, set neck, string through, or neck through rather. It's all one giant piece of their own material that they made called Arium. And in addition to that, the fretboard is a material called Rich Light, which again is not wood. It's basically a composite material that I believe is like millions of pieces of paper that were compressed to make it sound and react like wood without it actually being wood. Obviously this is a nine string guitar. Aristides makes the HO series in every other possible combination of string amounts, but this one in particular is the nine string. Speaking of the amount of strings and the neck of this guitar, obviously it is a fan fret multi-scale design. So on the high E string, we are at a 27 inch scale, moving to the low string, which is 29 inches. So we have a 27 to 29 inch fan. This guitar in particular has two Lundgren M9 pickups, which sound absolutely insane. And it also has a five way selector switch, which is humbucker, inner coil, both humbuckers, inner coil, and neck only. Another interesting feature about this guitar is actually if you look at the bottom here on the B cam, it actually has two different output jacks. There we go, you can see there. So it has one there and one there. Uh, this isn't a stereo output, it's still a standard output jack. They just put two of them on there because if you sit like me, for example, again, as you can see on this camera, I would not want to put the output jack there because that's exactly where my leg is. But if you sit like this, then you can see either of them are accessible, but you might want to do that one instead, giving you another option, uh, which is pretty handy. Other than that, just a few other things to go over. The frets on this guitar are stainless steel. And like I mentioned earlier, this is the H09R and the R in that stands for raw. So the finish on this guitar is actually more or less baked into the actual guitar. It's not a painted finish. This is the color of the material 
of the body. So that's pretty much it for the specs of this instrument. It's always interesting talking about the specs because obviously they look so crazy in Space Age, but the specs are actually pretty simple for the most part. Um, so with that being said, I'm gonna play through the guitar by itself so you can hear what it sounds like on its own. <laughs> Okay, so moving on to the next part of the video, this is where I like to give my thoughts and opinions on the guitar. So what you would expect for a guitar of this price range is obviously the utmost quality and Aristides definitely delivers on that. Obviously I'm a little bit biased because I work with the company and you know, I have my own builds already. So this, you know, hit my expectations pretty much exactly what I would expect from Aristides. It's super high quality, no sharp fret ends, sounds amazing, feels amazing. Everything feels rock solid on it. The only critique that I have is actually something that I've talked about with the CEO of the company already. Uh, the bridge of the guitar. So once you have the guitar strung up, it's all rock solid, nothing's gonna move around on you, it stays in tune, everything works great. My critique though is that this double locking bridge system is just kind of annoying to restring. I've personally found that it made my restring process a little bit longer, which to me, and you know, that's something that I would like to not have to deal with. Um, basically, there's two different versions of a headless bridge. There is this type, which you can see here. You actually have to cut off the ball end of the string and then feed it into this little cylinder here and then screw that in to basically lock the end of the string into the bridge and then you twist it there to tune it up. So this style of bridge has never been something that I prefer personally on headless guitars because I find the process of cutting off the ball string getting it into the cylinder and then locking it just a little bit tedious. And it also, of course, introduces more potential room for failure in the mix. Again, not that this bridge has failed, it all worked perfectly fine, um, but it did make the restringing process a little bit more annoying and take a little bit longer. What I would like to see in the future for our CETAs is to add an option for an alternate bridge design, which actually allows you to keep the ball end intact. Um, different companies like Hipshot already make stuff like this. So basically, instead of cutting off the ball end, you put the ball end into like a little saddle and you just twist and that's it. So that cuts out the work of having to cut off the ball end, stick it in and then lock it with a wrench. So, you know, it just makes things a little bit easier and more efficient, which I am a big fan of. However, with all this being said, the good news is I was already talking to Pascal, who's the CEO of Aristides, about this uh, thing that I didn't like about the guitar. And he actually informed me that they're already working on a solution with Hantung, which is the brand that makes this bridge. So what they're basically planning to do is offering an option in the future for headless builds. I'm not sure when this is coming, so please don't email Aristides and ask right away because, you know, they're still working on it. It's not ready quite yet. But basically what they're planning to do is make alternate uh, tuning pegs. So the bridge will stay exactly the same, but they're basically planning on making alternate pieces where you can just unscrew the tuning peg, take it off and put the new one in because they're developing a new one that does allow you to keep the ball end intact, which is great because that's exactly what my only critique of this guitar was. So it's awesome that before I even mentioned it to him, they were already working on it. 
and I look forward to seeing how that works for sure. So again, I just wanna emphasize this bridge is perfectly fine as is. This is mostly just a preferential thing where I think it is a lot easier to string up a guitar when you keep the ball end intact. Again, it just removes a little bit of potential room for failure and makes your life a little bit easier. You don't need to carry around you know, uh, a wrench for this screw and for this screw because they're two different sizes and you don't need to cut the ball in. Just makes things a little faster and a little easier, which I am a big fan of when restringing. I want it to be as quick as possible. Other than that though, everything else about the guitar is amazing. And again, once it was strung up, everything has been great. No tuning issues, stability is great, and it sounds awesome. Oh my God, these Lundgren M9s sound absolutely ridiculous. It's really, really cool that these are in here. I've never tried these before. Most nine string guitars come with active pickups and pretty much every nine string I've ever had has had EMG 909s or EMG 909 Xs, which also sound really good, but I personally usually prefer passive pickups. So it was really, really cool to finally try a nine string that already had them. And nonetheless, they're the Lundgren M9s, which are like the best sounding extended range pickups anyways. I already have these pickups in one of my eight strings and I've had them in a seven string in the past and they just always sound good. These Lundgrens absolutely destroy. So that's pretty much it for my thoughts and opinions on this guitar. Like I said, overall, absolutely love it. Really sad I have to give it back and really thankful that Pascal and the team over at Aristides are open to player feedback and I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with that potential new bridge design in the future because having more efficient string changes is always a welcome change. If you're interested in learning more about this guitar or potentially ordering one for yourself, the link to RSC's website is gonna be in the description and the pinned comment below. Also, of course, a big thank you to all my Patreon members whose names are on the screen at this point in time. If you're interested in audio downloads, guitar tabs, stems, or a shout out on the screen, you can find all that over on my Patreon page, which is also linked in the description below. Thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Be on the lookout because we will be doing more videos with this guitar before we send it back because we're going to make the most of it. But yeah, thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.